So, um, I'm here recording in the studio right now. I just lowered the mic, like, all the way. Bradley, care to explain why? I don't know. I feel shorter for some reason. That's odd. Yeah, no, I don't know. He came in and it was like he could not reach the height that I had the mic set at. So I had to lower it and I kept lowering it until it was finally next to his mouth, which was actually at the lowest of the low settings. Um, And then I had to dig a hole into the ground for the mic to sit in. Yeah, I'm right now sitting in that hole. I don't know why the hole was necessary, but there I am in a hole. Shut up. Yay. Shut up. Yay. Stop. Thank you. It's hard to hear when you're saying stop or go inside this hole. Inside the hole? You can't hear me? No. I'm screaming into the hole right now. I I know. And like, I know you're screaming. I'm screaming out of the hole. And you're responding perfectly to all the words I'm saying. It's almost like you can understand me perfectly. I have a teleprompter for what you're going to say inside the hole. Okay. Well, they didn't know that we had a script, Jared. Welcome to Good Idea. Good Idea is a brain trust your brain can trust. It is a comedy podcast where we find creative, actionable solutions to your real-life problems. I'm Aiden Kinsella. I'm Bradley Berklich. And this is Is Good Idea. idea. Bradley, how are you? I am great. I'm right now thriving at Kenya College in Nairobi. Oh, yeah, 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 dude. That's awesome. Actually, you were supposed to get me Obama's autograph. How are you doing on that? Obama has not gone home for a while. I thought he'd be back for Parents Weekend, but no. That's a fair point. Yeah, do, do his daughters go there? I mean, they have to, you know, they're Kenyan. So that's a very good point. I guess my, my next question for you, do you have any good stories from this week that you want to tell me about since we haven't seen each other and, or I guess talked to each other in a while? Um, hmm. do I have any good stories? Let me think. Oh yeah. I just have just generally great stories of the fact that there's a guy who's literally the stereotype of guy with alcohol from PSAs at Kenya university. Really? Yeah. Like he straight up said the words, I'm trying to enable you to be an alcoholic. Okay, and how did you respond to that? Did you take any of that alcohol? Well, yeah, I mean, like, he's... The the PSA said the cool kids drink the alcohol. That's fair, and one thing I know about Bradley is he loves to drink alcohol to be cool. That's me. That's you. Bradley Berklich. Bradley Berklich. Caving to social pressures. Remember, guys, this is Bradley Berklich I'm talking to, and he loves to drink alcohol, underage. Yes, my name is Bradley J. Berklich, and I enjoy drinking alcohol at the age of 18, despite the drinking age being 21. Okay, now, what is your address, just in case lawyers or fans, I mean fans of our podcast, want to find you? 111 Kenya in Nairobi. Okay. That's actually very intuitive. Yeah, yeah, you just go to Kenya. <laughs> you, you just go, go there. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> then you're and in it's there. Nairobi. You found it. Yeah, 111 is like the bigger area code, and then Nairobi is like my apartment. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like your apartment number, like your school's apartment number, or just your own no, personal? Me, me. You, 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 okay. You know. That's really cool. So you get your own, you have your own like off campus apartment that you live in? No, it's on campus. They gave it to me. Why? They wanted to, I don't know. They took one look at me and decided that I needed to be separated from the others. That's a very, very fair point. You are small and intimidating. No, I'm Bradley. I'm large and intimidating. Uh, then why did I dig that fucking hole for you? I don't know. I feel like th- this whole joke is digging itself right now. <laughs> Honestly, this whole joke is horrible. I'm trying to harmonize. Stop going up. Uh, it's harmony chicken. <laughs> Let's play the harmonizing penis game where we harmonize on penis louder and louder until penis, one of us laughs. Penis, 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 penis. I win. I lost. <laughs> penis, penis, penis. His dick is that curvy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just wanted the I, I wanted to showcase the ups and downs. Yeah, no, it. It, it, I mean it's technically long because it's like a zigzag. It's oh, kind of yeah. weird. Like I'll need to add a visual to this completely audio-based format to explain the joke. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, I actually was just holding out that note for um, I guess it would be one millisecond per inch of the size of my wang. Ladies, if you wanted a wang. He has one. Huge. Just got a huge wanger on this guy. He uh, just purchased it. It's new. It, like these microphones. So should we do a prompt? I don't know. Do you have any funny stories first? Do I have any funny stories? Okay. Well, let me tell you about my week. So first of all, 
I had an essay I had to write and I didn't. I mean, I did eventually, but like <laughs> there was a lot of time that I spent not. Wait, if this is the bar for funny stories, I have like five more. So tell me more about this essay. So yeah, uh, the essay had like a huge clown nose on it. See, it's funny now. Uh, it's I funny. See. Clowns are really funny. Yeah. If you go back through our catalog of our show, actually, you can find uh, hard evidence that clowns are funny. We proved it. So oh, yeah, make of that what you will. Um, so yeah, that was my first uh, story, and it became funny right at the end there with the twist that made the punchline. Other than that, do I have any funny stories? That's a really, really great question. Um, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. College is hard. Yeah, oh, I, I'm reminded. I do have a funny story that you totally have not heard, Aiden. Please tell me is, it. I ran, I, Bradley Berklich, have ran and lost for a position of student assembly senator at Bradley College, which is Kenya University. I repeat, Kenya University, 111 Kenya in Nairobi. Send me anthrax. Um, it's me, Bradley Berklich. And my whole platform was vote for me or I'll lose. And uh, I thought I would get out the vote. This is not a, this is legit a conversation I had with someone on my campaign. Should we bring in a clown to like drum up support? Okay, well, clowns are funny. Yes, yes, they're funny. But Jared, you already had one at the head of your campaign. And his name was Jared. Except I'm Bradley. I meant Bradley, you already had one at the head of your campaign. Bradley J. Berklich. How are no, you? Jar Jared's just sitting in a corner in the hole. The J stands for Jared. I fixed it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> fixed. Fixed. Retconned. Jared is not a guest. He's just other Bradley. He's just Bradley's alternate personality that Bradley switches between sometimes. Yes. This is true. You know when Bradley talks about how he's like a little bit Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the Lil refers to the height. New rapper name. Now, Bradley, hear me out. This one's just for you. Lil Jew. That's Lil Dicky's sidekick. That's a very good point. Lil Dicky is already Lil Jew, huh? Yeah. Okay, I was just thinking maybe you could use it. We need a big Jew. We need a large Jew. Consider. It's Bradley. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's some bad juju right there. Ha ha. I'm gonna just sort of wait till that joke becomes funny. I'm gonna time it. One, two, three. Nope, joke is still dead. You owe it to yourself to tell them that you just made me double over with laughter into my bed, Jared. I, I, I did not see that. Oh, the, oh! You, it was blocked by the microphones. I mean, Bradley, it was blocked by the mi <laughs> blocked by the microphones. Um, yeah, I don't have any funny stories. Nothing funny ever happens to me. Life sucks. It's a series of compromises and disappointments, and then you die. Um, on that note, on that hilarious goof, uh, we're all out of jokes. This is gonna be a a dry podcast about actionable solutions when it comes to housing policy. Okay, so first of all, uh, we have a question from listener Nancy who, um, actually all of them are named Nancy, which is the weird part. <laughs> um, but that seems actually very in line with our line of work. So uh, we have a question from our listener, Nancy. Nancy Nancy actually uh, is her full name. And she wants to know how she can set aside money each month to help her pay off her mortgage. Um, Jared, I mean, Bradley, do you have any advice? For well, Nancy, right, Nancy. Start, start by having money. This is really important. I've tried saving for a home without having anything to save, and my giant comically large safe just sits empty next to my giant comically large and empty Scrooge McDuck pool. So start by having money, and then treat it differently from the other money, and try and produce stereotypes about the color of the money so they sort of self-separate, and if that doesn't work, create, like, separate facilities for the different kinds of money, like are you, housing are, money. Sorry. And, are you ensuing <laughs> that... Canadians color their money so they can save easier because the money segregates itself so you can't spend all of it in one place. In part, because also, if the money doesn't segregate itself, you have to institute your own segregation policy with your money, like this Scrooge McDuck pool is for Canadian money, and this Scrooge McDuck pool is for American money, and it's up to you, and this, the listener, to decide which one is better. And I live in Flint, Michigan, and this Scrooge McDuck pool is for clean water, which oh. is truly what makes me wealthy now, and, we, <laughs> now you see we have another question from uh, oh nancy. we have another question yeah. uh Na oh nancy really yeah no this is a different Fant one. Oh, okay this nancy is also from flint michigan and lives got in it Poole, okay and her question is very simple and it's she lives uh, when's it gonna fucking rain she lives in a, in a pool yes 
Is the pool empty? No, th- th- that's why she has the question. Which so is, it when is it rain? going to rain? Well, so actually, that's not really a question in our uh, expertise in regards to our work as uh, economics uh, pr- professors and advisors. We both teach economics at econ- economy school. and uh, Academy school in Nairobi. Address it, 112 in Nairobi. It's literally right next to Bradley's apartment. <laughs> Um, it's a very you can small hear the school. Economists going all night. <laughs> you can hear the economy, <laughs> economy school, where you can hear the economy ringing in your ears. I, Bradley Berklich, would like to quit my education at Kenyon College to go to economy school. Kenya College. Kenya, the, it's it's a soft it's a soft am. <laughs> it's an n that just sort of fades out the more you develop an accent. It's of- a it's a soft elongated an with a circumflex over it. <laughs> Tell me, Jared. Um, Bradley, I mean, um, how is it supposed to rain in Flint, Michigan? With all of the metal in the water, I feel like it's too heavy to evaporate. Well, you see, I've actually consulted the top economists, and it's supposed to literally rain cats and dogs to make up for it. And the cats and dogs are made of metal, so then they're there for water, because Flint, Michigan. That Dumb. seems like a hazard. Yes, it is. So I warn you, if you have a dog, avoid the cats, and if you have a cat, avoid the dog. Now, what if you have both a cat and a dog? Well, then you're fucked. Then, basically, I would suggest a, a quick seppuku. I would recommend a stomach. seppuku as well. Now, we have another question from uh, Nancy from Flint, Michigan, actually. And this is actually the first Nancy again. Oh. She wants to know what the word mortgage means. Oh, She's yeah. kind of confused. Well, you see, it has its roots from uh, the French mort, which like means... death. Death, yes. And then the rest is just a little add-on, because mortgages are death, Nancy. You see, I have five of them, and they all won't shut up that causes me to lose money and stuff because economy. But no, they just won't shut up. So warning, mortgages are death. The old ball and chain, am I right? That seems correct to me. So Nancy, you've heard it here first. Um, Nancy, you've heard it here first. And Nancy, again, you've heard it here first. No, actually, she heard it here second. She she had some other advice earlier. She got some other advisor that said the exact same thing? Yeah. Did you start a private practice? No, no. Um, actually, The Economist's over in 109 in Nairobi. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. The Economy School 2? The Economy School 2. This time it's personal. Fuck, dude. Yeah, they're, they're really into it. Okay, well, thank you, Nancys, for your questions, and we'll be back next week with It's the Economy, Stupid, starring Aiden and Bradley. Yes, Aiden and Bradley. Aiden and Bradley. I'm glad that's settling in. Your two economy advisors. Yes. Now, um, so Bradley, now that we're now that we're done with that segment, uh, I think we should do another segment. Do you have any ideas for segments? Yeah. How about? I mean, I, I said yeah, and then I had no ideas. Me when I'm bad at improv. <laughs> yes. So I'm just gonna make my next segment pulling out a gun and pointing at you in this as a visual gag in an audio format. It's also a funny The Office reference for anyone who has ever seen that flick at home. For the, for that 1% of the audience who has not seen The Office but still finds Aiden funny. I mean, that's very hurtful to me because I feel like my sense of humor is very, very different than that of The Office. And that's why I don't like The Office very much. The television program is largely based on cringe comedy. And as much as cringe comedy can be funny sometimes, I, for one, prefer a more intellectual brand of comedy in which ding-dongs are discussed with high levels of intelligence. We are sponsored for this week by Rick and Morty. Well, to be fair, I mean, you do have to have a very high IQ to understand that. Yeah, no, now, Bradley, you do have to have a very high. You have to have a very high. We can't expect that of our listeners. You have to have a very high IQ to understand the comedy stylings of Rick and Morty. Yeah, not the style, the stylings. That's you know, what I said. Yeah, I know that's what you said. I'm just pointing out that, like, to the viewers, you may think that comedy is a style. Like, some people have style comedy. No, normal people have a style. Rick and sometimes Morty have stylings. The the weird thing is actually that you have to have a cosmetology de- degree to understand the hairstylings of Rick and Morty. So make of that what you will. I'm going to make of that what I will. I want to do another segment. It's called improv. We're going to do because <laughs> I'm in a mood for it's improv. Fun fact, I'm notoriously bad at improv. I, I Bradley was unaware. J. Berklich. Bradley J. Berklich. You heard it here first, everyone. Bradley is really bad at improv. Uh, he's really brad at improv. Uh, <laughs> um, so, this first game we're going to play is the only game we're going to play. And we're just going to do scenes that consist of three lines in which we will try to establish a character's character relationship and uh, event. And we did this at Improv Club today. So, now you can s- just part the kimono a little bit and just see sort of what I've got going on under there. That is a weird thing to have under a kimono. Well, yeah, a I mean, club. what do you have? 
I, I just, I mean, to be fair, I also have debate because me, Bradley, I do debate. I have just big de- debate boy. Big debate boy. I have a, a large debate club under my kimono. And you I have just, a large D under your. Under yeah, your I have a large D under my. K. A DC? Would you say like a dick? Yeah. No, I have a large. I, Bradley J. Berklich, have a large penis. <laughs> no, no, debate club. Dick. Debate. Yes, fine. I have a large dick. <laughs> Don't you go to school in Washington, Dick? Washington, Washington dick. Debate Club. Washington, <laughs> dick. 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 So if someone doesn't get that, that's just meaningless to them. And I respect that. And for you, I, I appreciate that you kept listening through. I applaud you. I applaud you because that was hell. Um... So, but no, I, th- that did give me an idea though, which is that did it really? Yes, that all the people in D.C., like all politicians and like bureaucrats or whatever, they actually don't have different opinions. They're pretending to disagree for the sake of the debate club. Okay, now you say debate club, but I was literally theorizing about this idea of them pretending to disagree the other day, and their actual um, their actual whole thing was just like a scheme to make money. You you, you mean a pyramid scheme? No. Oh. More of a circular scheme? More of a multi-level marketing business plan. Ladies and gentlemen, Aiden has taken a small break. He has been replaced by uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Let's say hi to Gwyneth, everyone. Hi. Okay, so let me tell you guys about Goop. It's really sticky, and if you put it in your vagina, you'll grow hair again. It's me, Gwyneth Paltrow. Do you want some other... What other ailments are you looking to cure? Gwyneth, should I take out a loan to buy a cat? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Um, so I think if you're trying to buy a cat, the first thing you're going to want to do is buy this new hair syrup that I made. So I did not say serum. I did say syrup, just since sometimes people question me on that. So you pour it in your hair and it makes it, well, I guess the best way to say it, it, it does make your hair smell like maple syrup. Now you might be wondering, is it just maple syrup? And I will say no. It is Gwyneth Paltrow's hair syrup, and you put it in your hair, and then cats love that shit, and they'll come right on up to you. And I mean, I'm so cool, and everyone should buy my products. Let me tell you about... Do you have more questions? Gwyneth, exactly how much is uh, this uh, hair syrup? Um, It's about 12 ounces a bottle. No, 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 no. Like, how much debt do I go into? Oh, you don't go into any debt. My hair syrup only costs $1,000 in three installments. Okay, and you just have to order it on my phone number. And Gwyneth, can you give out your phone number for the world, please? Yeah, it's um one one one. Nairo N I R O B E. That's yeah, that's it. It's that's it. I don't know if I spelled that right, but it's definitely what my number is. Uh, so just call me, and for three easy payments of one thousand dollars plus shipping and handling, um, you can have some of my hair syrup. Do you have any other problems that you're looking to? Uh, it's great for cats. Uh, any other problems you're looking to solve? Uh, yes, um, and it's, uh, it's in a similar vein, but not the same thing, which is, my roommate keeps shoving a light bulb up his ass. Like, how do I tell him to not? Okay, well, what you're actually, um, what your roommate is, is your roommate turning on the light bulb once it's in? It's sort of a mutual thing between them. No, that's not what I meant by turning on, I'm so sorry. Is your roommate electrifying or lighting up the light bulb? It, it, it kind of depends. If he takes a shit into the light bulb, it lights up, and it's, like, kind of an enlightening experience to watch. It is surely an enlightening experience. And when he so, doesn't take a shit, then it just sort of stays dark, and it's a really awkward moment for all How can you see this room. light bulb inside his ass? It, it, it It's sort of a large light bulb. Oh, very clear and large. That's good. So here's what you're going to want to do. You don't want to stop your roommate from doing this, because he actually did um, presumably read about this on my blog. It's called... Thomas Edisoning, you just stick it on in there. But what he's failing to do is he's failing to get the uh, to turn on the light. Which what that does is that sh- that cleans out your insides and it it really brightens it up in there. So you're gonna want to do that. Now the only way for this to work effectively is you do have to use the classic traditional method of getting electricity. So you are gonna want to tie a string made of metal up to a kite and fly that out your ass tied to the light bulb outside. Now. There needs to be a key on that kite, too. And when it gets struck by lightning, the light bulb will explode inside his ass, and it will really clean it out in there. And then what what you'll know it's cleaning because a bunch of red fluid will flow out, and that will be the dirt in the anus coming out of his butt. 
after the light bulb explodes. <laughs> wow, that, that, that was really some deep insight about the nature of moral philosophy. Thank you to our sponsor, Greenwich Paltrow. It's, it's uh, Gwyneth, actually. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, thank you, Greenwich. It's, uh, it's Gwyneth. Uh, you can call her at 111 Nairobi in Kenya. <laughs> And now, um, that was that has been our sponsored section. Now for our totally not sponsored section, a random person off the street who just fucking loves Blue Apron and Skillshare. Let me tell you about Blue Apron. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. With Blue Apron, what you're going to get sent to your door three times a week, or more or less, depending on what you select, it's all going to be very tailored to you, you're going to get these pre-packaged, pre-portioned meals that you cook by yourself in your kitchen. And there's no waste because it's all pre-portioned, so you're not going to be making too much. And every meal is between 500 and 700 calories, roughly. So none of it's going to be super unhealthy for you. And what you are going to have is often plenty of leftovers. Blue Apron actually sent me some stuff this week. They sent me um, mashed potatoes and more mashed potatoes, which is my personal favorite meal from them. Um, they also sent me a pizza box, which is a box made of pizza. Well, not yet. It, it comes inside the box and it, it's just, well, it, it's a mess of melted cheese and sauce and the cheese has unmelted by the time it gets here. It's very, it's a lot, but once you cook it, let me tell you, it is so good. I really, I really, really like, um, blue apron. And if you go to blueapron.com right now, I will give you $6, not off of your blue apron order. Just, I will Venmo you $6. What was the other one? Uh, the, uh, Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Yeah. Quick, I'm running out of steam. I'm f- losing my energy. Jared, come on. Get it to me. Get it to me. Get it to me. Get it to Skillshare. me. Get it. Skillshare. Skillshare. Okay. Uh, let me tell you about Skillshare. So Skillshare is one of my favorite um, subscription services that you can that you can subscribe to. And Very specific. With, uh, with, with Skillshare, what you're going to get is every month you're going to get another box with a skill inside of it. Um, so what's cool is la- like I got, I got um, pole vaulting last <laughs> month. And what it taught me how to do when I opened the box is I all of a sudden had the skill to pole vault. Well, at least that's what it said on the paper inside. Now, I haven't had a chance to check it because I do not have a pole vaulting kit. But I'm pretty sure if I were to go try to pole vault right now, I would definitely succeed. Well, Aiden, I'm glad you mentioned this because in front of our live <laughs> studio audience, we're going to give you a pole and something to vault oh dude this is all i've wanted to ever do now when you say vault like the money kind with a bunch of money in it no oh that's disappointing here's what you have to do you have to take this pole and get over these yaks yes plural hashtag feminism that's a fair point okay give me the pole yoink okay the pole has been yoinked everybody I'm going to get a running start and I'm going to jump over the axe. Drum roll, please. Yeah! And uh, for those who did not see, Aiden successfully jumped over the yaks, who then decided to trample him, making some very fun yak noises. This has concluded the first and last live studio audience portion of Good Idea. If you did not get your ticket... Well, you, you know, I mean, you, you, you didn't really miss much. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was it was all right. Thanks for asking if I was okay, Bradley. Uh, no, no, I, it, it, I really care more about the yaks. One of the yaks gave me a fucking wedgie. The yaks are sort of the comedic central tenet of Good Idea. The rest is sort of window dressing. They're the ones who do all that writing that we were talking y- about yes, earlier. Yes, yaks at a keyboard. But I got to say, all these advertisements have given me like an actual idea. Okay, Which is, hit me with let's it. say you're a murderer on the go. Like, okay, let, well, a, let's just say that like I'm not all, like I'm not, like, because I'm not already that. You're a murderer? Who's, I'm no, I'm not. No, <laughs> basically. But let's, let's just say hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically. I'm a murderer on a the murderer go. You're a murderer with like, whose life is just about as busy as like the stereotypical busy person. From I was going to say, is, is it like a mom? Am I like a mom with like five kids and they're, they all have soccer practice at different times of the day? <laughs> I have to I have to make them all orange slices. Jimmy, soccer practice at 3 a.m. Let's go. <laughs> Night soccer. Soccer after dark for adult children. Jimmy's my husband, you guys. And let me tell you, when my husband has soccer practice, the only thing that he will eat is dried orange slices from Nature Box. So when he's out there doing his sexy adult soccer, if you know what I mean. He's fucking Wink. other soccer women. They're called soccer moms, Jared, please. (laughs) They don't have to be moms. Hashtag feminism. They have to be MILFs, so they do have to be moms. So basically, my idea is for the jet-setting murderer on the go, 
It's a black apron. They send you all the kits for like a pre-planned murder and then you just have to do it. Like they give you all the ingredients and the alibis and like, you know, all that stuff. And then you just do it. And then you can go back to sending Jimmy to adult soccer practice after dark. Important question. Will they send me the fake fingerprints that I have to put? I mean, hypothetically would have to put on all of the things that I use to commit murders. Yes, they will. And fun fact, they are I... Bradley J. Berklich's fingerprints. They sure are. <laughs> and if uh, you read them, they say 111 in Nairobi, Kenya. That's very cool. That's the, the cool thing is that your fingerprints do spell out your address. So in case you ever get lost, people will know where to return you to. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I just look at my fingers. I'm like, oh shit, I live in Kenya. Okay, so uh, now I have a very important question, Jared, because when I look at my skin, it usually tells me that I don't live in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see, Bradley, you're a part I'm Bradley? Of, you, yes, you're Bradley. I'm Bradley. This. Fun fact, he's Bradley. I've been aiding this entire time. It was a prank. More like a social experiment. Okay, okay. well, fine. So, I'm going to start calling pranks social experiments all the fucking time. And thus, he is like seven years behind to prank channels on YouTube. Woo! Side roast prank channels on YouTube. No, basically, so you, Bradley, may be the whitest person I know. But you also, being the whitest person, if you think about, like, video games makes you the blackest person. You are so white, you go back to black. <laughs> <laughs> are you implying that black people don't play video games? I mean, like, that is kind of the most important stereotype about black people in modern America. Is that they don't play video games. Yes. That is the thing that is setting back a generation of young men and women who could be going to Kenya. Because all the racist old people really hate the people, the young people who don't play video games. That's yeah. like the thing, right? This Where the a, old people hate it when you don't play video games when you're a kid. This is a direct quote from the local racist in town. I do declare. How about the local racist <laughs> out of town? Can I have the out-of-town local racist? Yes, I just wasted a good accent on the lo local racist, <laughs> and now I have to come up with a completely different one. Do a, do a, do a uh, sensual Chicago Borat. Well, hello there. <laughs> I am unlocal racist. This is sensual. You pointless the, the sexiest thing is when you <laughs> say it's sensual. So, the, the not white people, they play no game. They play not my game. My game fun, like Tetris, but with squirrel. So are you fitting squirrels into the each other? I mean, basically, yes, but when you say it, it sounds stupid. But it Is has... it a squirrel breeding game? <laughs> You've caught me. I just breed squirrels. You are a squirrel breeder. Now, is this a video game or like a real life game that you play? I mean, I put cardboard fake TV in front of people in card video game. That is fair. So I have another question for you, follow up. Um, if I were to tell you right now that there is a dating simulator where you can date squirrels, how would you respond to that? I can tell you how I responded. There is jizz all over the recording studio. Like, it's fucking covered. I... The mic is just drenched. How did, how did you get all of that through <laughs> your pants? Holy shit, you're not wearing any <laughs> pants. I only use squirrel clothing. Hashtag sponsored by Greenwich Peltro. And scene. I kind of like the idea of you just like having a squirrel gripping your back to create like a <laughs> tail, like a furry tail that you might have if you were a furry. Yes, if. Or like, yeah, yeah if. if I, Hypothetically, if, if I, Bradley, Bradley J. Berklage. <laughs> am not really a furry. You're not wink, really wink a furry, Bradley. Could you do like butterfly kisses on the mic with your eyebrow, just, or eyelashes, not with your eyebrows? I, I'm just going to rub my eyebrows all over the mic. Oh, dude, that's it's, so it's sensual. Gonna be, it's going to be a fun time. That's so sensual. Audience, you know it's sensual because I said it was sensual. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, hear me out here. I have n literally no clue what we were talking about earlier. I mean, in a way, we were talking about society. In a way, we were basically doing a treatise on what it's like to live in America modern, modern yeah, days. We, we are better than Childish Gambino at describing the black experience in America. I, I mean, yeah. I can't think I, of any... Bradley J. Berklich, believe this. And you, and you can quote him on that. <laughs> You can quote me, Bradley J. Berklage, to say a whole ton of racist shit into a microphone. Could you give me some examples? I, Bradley J. Berklage, am a racist and a homophobe, and you can quote me on that. I don't care for these new Nazis, and you may quote me on that. I, I think I will.
that you, Bradley J. Berklich, have said that. That I don't like the new Nazis. He, he he's an he's an he's one of those traditionalist Nazis, you know. That's fair. Yeah, I was gonna say that seems kind of out of character for Bradley to not like the Nazis, but yeah, no, Bradley has to get in character and into his Nazi persona before every recording. And when I say Bradley, I mean me, Bradley. Yeah, you, Bradley. Why don't we do a different bit? I, I think I like this. Fine, very good point. New bit, and it is. Hey, I have some new skincare cream for you. You have new skin? Oh my god, he has new skin. You guys uh, that's cannot not what I said. He has new I didn't, skin. No, okay, well, I d- didn't want them to notice. I'm really insecure about it. No, no, you don't understand. Also, it's really insecure. It's very loose on my body. It's just kind of <laughs> like flapping around right now. It's going to be editing hell. Like that audio, the, the skin flapping sound. Jared, why'd you fucking point it out? That skin flapping sound, for reference, is more strong than the sound of 17 condors mid-flight. It's even stronger than the sound of him, Bradley J. Berklich, jizzing all over the studio. <laughs> For reference, that was not Bradley J. Berklich. It was the non-local racist who did that. So I have some new skincare cream for you. Now that you've fucking exposed me, I'm going to double charge. But I think that it would even be worth it to you even at that price. Really? What is this price? The price is two American dollars. I mean, for that kind of money... Your skincare product would literally need to turn me into the dictionary definition of skin. (laughs) It can do more than just turn you into the dictionary definition of skin. Ooh, tell me more about these supposed features. First of all, it has a cup holder. That's right. Oh, shit. The (laughs) the (laughs) best. Cup holder made of skin. Skin cup holder. Wait, that's just (laughs) called a vagina. You can tell Aiden pulls a lot in college. I mean... Hey, baby, can I fuck your skin cup holder? I, Bradley J. Perklich, have said that. So, yeah, this skincare uh, product, it does have a cup holder. Um, skin, skin cup holder. Um, let me tell you about some of its other features. sounds like a fleshlight. This is just... Well, now, hold on. Now, hold on. Because Mm, what if I were to tell you that... When lubricated, it's even easier to fit the cup inside. Wow, tell me more. What if I were to tell you that inside the inside the skincare container is some is some lotion that you could use that already lubricates it because that's what the skincare product you is. You are literally a describing a flashlight to me. Well, tell no, me more. Now hold on, because if you put the skincare product in hot water, it gets like jelly. It gets like jelly, um, but normally it stays um, sort of sort does of like it hard. Like for, human skin. Well, does it taste like it tastes more like rubber? To be honest, like the container does, and then the lotion inside does. Is it taste... made of human skin? Yes or no? Is it made of human skin? Well, no. Legally, I'm not allowed to say it's made of human but skin. But illegally. Well, illegally, yes. Now I'm sold. From an illegal standpoint, yes, I would say it is made of human skin. Do you, Bradley J. Berklich, sell human skin? I, Bradley J. Berklich, am a peddler of human skin on the deep web. Let me tell you about my deep web website. So first you're going to want to go on and type in deepweb.com slash www.deepweb.com slash 111 Nairobi. (laughs) Fun fact, Bradley J. Berklich's email address is also his actual address. That's the weird part. And so when you go on the Nairobi.biz on the deep web, you are going to find so many different skin products. I was going to say skincare, but I mean, we're talking illegally now, so it's not fucking fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, Bradley J. Berklich, love to peddle human skin on the internet. All right, so I got to ask, when you were buying your on-campus housing, uh huh, did they know your email and deep web address already corresponded to 111 in Nairobi? I specifically requested this address, even though it was the worst house on campus, because I wanted it to be on brand and easy to find for my fans. And and can you tell me, why is this housing the worst on campus? Okay, first of all, there's one very big cockroach. He sleeps in the bed next to me. Is his name Bradley J. Berklich? His name is not Bradley J. Berklich. That is my name. However, his name is Daniel. Uh, well, you, you gotta get to know Daniel. I'm sure he's a nice guy at heart. He Just, never does his laundry. Does he wear clothes? No. Then I think he needs to, one, wear some squirrels, and two, it'll all be fine. Okay, but if, okay, so he never does his laundry, though. All right, so here's what you gotta do. You gotta rip off his exoskeleton, throw it in the washer, and then give it to him so then he'll learn how to use the dryer. That's a fair point. Um, Jared... 
Who's Jared? No, I'm I'm talking to my alter ego. Okay, yeah, alter ego. Yeah, there's a council of several of them actually that I <laughs> <laughs> that I speak to. A council of several Jareds that I that I confer with occasionally to make my decisions. Yeah, and when I... that doesn't work, I tend to go to my quadumvirate of friends to make my decisions for me. I, Bradley J. Berklich, wish he was making this up. But he's actually not. This is the most real this episode has gotten. Well, other than the fact that we are both Bradley, Bradley J. J. Berklich. <laughs> um, and you may quote me on that. So, yeah, I know there's this one very big cockroach who doesn't do his laundry. To be fair, he doesn't wear any clothes, which is actually a pro in my Bradley J. Berklich's opinion. Um, I do really enjoy that my cockroach roommate, let's just say there's a reason he's called a cockroach. He's very hung and he loves weed. Really? A uh, cockroach. Can you explain this joke with excruciating detail? Okay, so, first of all, have you ever heard of a penis? No. I, Bradley J. Berklich, have never heard of a penis. Okay, so do you have a dangly donger? Wait, let me let me check. He's unzipping his pants? Oh, shit! I thought that was a snake! Uh, and guys, it's so not a snake. It's not a snake, you guys. It, so that's the sad okay so snakes are for eating they were not for being they were supposed to teach you this in sixth grade okay okay the thing is that i have now seen your ding dong and <laughs> you certainly do have one um so that is a pain penis penis a penis penis right thank you sorry um so that is a penis and it is also referred to as a cock or a hard throbbing cock if you were to describe it in the state that yours is right now. Um, I, I just saw a squirrel and couldn't help myself. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, it sounds like you have a pretty good conception of what the panis is for, Jared Bradley. No, it's for making breakfast. You eat every morning. Is that what you call it? Every morning. The very fact that you call it making breakfast tells me you're not ready. No, no every morning I see a squirrel in my room next to David. Or Daniel, or whatever the fuck the cockroach's name is. And I, uh, I, I just Daniel. sort of release this pancake batter, which I then catch in a pan. I, I release it out of my snake, or panis as it is called. And then I just sort of, you know, cook it and fry it. And I uh-huh. serve it to all of my friends in Nairobi. W- would that be one of those, um, what are those called? I want to make a joke about, like, the, the shake and bake ones or whatever, the ones that you... Oh, I thought you were going to make a joke about friends. And no, the ones where you move it up and down, like, where you... Shake, shake weight. Sh- no, shake no, 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 shake weight, no. Please hold while we Google what this thing is. Is that called a shake and pour? Because it's like shaking something looks like jerking off. Ha, ha, ha. Like it the is, brand by Bisquick. It is called a shake and pour. Thank you for that original and quick-witted joke. Sponsored by Bisquick. Mm-hmm. Da 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 da. We're basically copyright infringing. Da 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 da. Bisquick. <laughs> da 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 da. Bisquick. <laughs> Have you ever wanted your pancakes to reek of smoke and fire? Then let your dad cook them, cause he'll cook them for way too long, and they'll burn. You thought I was gonna do a Satan thing. But I'm just sort of advocating for you to have breakfast with your dad. Who wants very badly to cook for you because he loves you so much. I, Bradley J. Berklich, CEO of Bisquick. Of Bisquick. I'm proud to announce our new sponsorship deal with famous YouTuber Batman slash Christian Bale. That's me. He cares about you having time with your family because he has none. Spend time with your dad until he gets shot. Yes, th- this is the brand Bisquick is going for. We're really moving away from the homemaker's market and into the children who are really into Batman and not in a good way market. You know how Denny's tried to be funny on Tumblr? We're essentially doing the opposite of that. da 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 da, da. we're not funny and on Tumblr. Sorry, sorry. Okay, he's doing it wrong. Can we get a cut? I need to retake that. All right, cut. Production team sounds now. All right. Da 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 da. Wait, what was it? What what was the line? What's the cut? What's the lot? And scene. <laughs> you know, if my life depended on it, I'm not quite sure I could describe what that scene was. Bisquick marketing. <laughs> Their guerrilla marketing campaign has really gone like everywhere. 
Hey, babe, you want to see a picture of Bisquick? Oh it's my like God. this thing, Wait, but, di- <laughs> but Bisquick. Hold up, though. Like, idea. A guerrilla marketing campaign in which people just send dick pics followed by brand names to get the name out there. So, like, picture of basically a, an above-average penis at hardened length, and then, like... So, like yours, Bradley J. Berklich's uh, penis. My Je- I, Bradley J. Berklich, have an above-average penis. And uh, it would send, like, a picture of my penis to, like, someone we know, like, I don't know, Bradley J. Berklich. And then, um... It Never would be- met him. I don't know. He's such a weird name. Never met me. <laughs> and then it would be, like, uh, d- basically Microsoft. Well, Microsoft. yeah, no, it sure would be Microsoft. <laughs> or, like, that, and then, I don't know. Eat at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, there could be a good one uh, for, for uh, it's like, um, here's my thought. All right, dick pic arrives on your phone. You open it, of course, excitedly. Oh, uh, boy, there's a picture of a penis on my phone. Wouldn't this literally be a soliciting dick pic? So it's the, <laughs> it's the first ever dick pic to solicit <laughs> instead of to not be solicited. <laughs> You've tried get it. You've tried sending unsolicited dick pics. What if you tried sending a soliciting dick pic? <laughs> it's a dick pic that also really wants to sell you some Bisquick. And it's a picture of just a bare penis. And then because there is no uh, brand association in the image itself, Trojan feels like nothing is there. All right. Can I ask something under the new no stupid questions mantra? Okay. Do you think bare dicks are have fur on them? First of all. Everyone knows that bear dicks are scaled. And I know this because bears are regularly used by the furry and scaly community to bridge the gap. But like, is there fur on the dick? No, it is scales only. Oh, that's going to be so painful. It scales Scales. all the way down, actually. The weird part is that there's no... You, they sort of stick it in, and when they try to come back out, it like um, fucking harpoons open. No, it harpoons open and gets stuck. (laughs) Then you can never leave me. Yikes. The harpoon dick. Tell me more about the harpoon penis. Harpoon penis is designed for that time where you really are angered by whales. Like, but not angry in a normal way, angered in a sexual way. So the harpoon dick is basically where they chop your penis off, which is like a minus. But then they add a full-sized harpoon to your balls, which is a plus. And the way Man, they do- did he ever chop my dick off. I mean, just chop my dick off and add a harpoon, am I right? <laughs> oh, you were being serious. <laughs> So imagine, if you will, a, a harpoon where it's a spike on both ends. I'm going to do real quick a demonstration when Jared's done, too, and then we'll talk about where you can get yeah. this product. So basically, imagine that one side of the harpoon sticks into where your penis was, and that's how it stays, because, like, the spike in the hook. Oh, yikes. This is not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> and then the other side is just a harpoon. So when you want to fuck someone, you just sort of carefully Wait, aim. sorry. It's a double-ended <laughs> harpoon. One side is stuck in. So do they just shoot it into you, and it just obliterates your dick? No, and then, no, no, we're not that barbaric. We ripped the dick off first. Okay, so it just obliterates what was behind your dick then, and then it opens up. Yeah, we have to pull the dick off manually, though, to make sure the process Do works. Do you have a tool to <laughs> use, or just like No, just you just hand. gotta t- you gotta take your bare hands and go for it. That's fair. See, I would go for a chomp, because the human teeth uh, and bite strength is pretty powerful. All right, I'm gonna do a live, uh, a live demonstration of this product. Jared, I want you to just sort of talk about um, what's happening as it's happening. Okay, uh, so, so I'm gonna Aiden's, start from the very beginning right, of the process. Aiden's walked into the room. Oh my god. Oh my oh my god, he has a gun. Fuck. Fuck, Aiden has a gun. I don't have a gun. <laughs> put Jared, it down. Jared's being silly. I don't have a gun. Fuck, Aiden. Aiden I don't listen, have a gun. This no, is my I don't. I promise Aiden, put I don't have a gun. gun. I promise I don't have a gun. Aiden. Aiden. No, no, Aiden. Please. I don't. I have I a hypothetical I don't, family. I don't have a gun. I don't have money. I'm a good man. No, you're not. I'm a good man. I just had a lot of beers in high school. I like, I get you like beer, but that's not an excuse. My to dad is in my the mouth. audience. So that was the demonstration. No, it wasn't. I'm going to try again. My dad is in the audience, which means I didn't commit any crimes. Fun fact. You guys, I have kids. That means I can't commit crime. Fun fact. Kids against crime. The CAGs are now in force. Those are the losers. I prefer kids who love crime. The K-W-L-C. The Quilk. Okay, no, I'm going to actually do the demonstration of the harpoon penis now, though. He's he's put away the gun. We're good. Oh. I've whipped out my other gun. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's very pointy. Ah! 
We haven't we haven't even touched you yet, sir. It's just I'm sorry. Okay, this time I won't do anything. Just I won't scream this time. I won't for, I won't scream this time, okay? Aiden is right now clutching onto his mother for support. <laughs> sir. Ah! Sir, we we need to go again. We missed. We have to pull it out and go again. Why am I bleeding? The, the blood is normal. It's a sign you're a mature woman. What? No, no, we're, we're sort of making some additions as well. Okay. okay. Also, we, we didn't tell you this before. We, we don't rip it, like, off. We sort of rip it in half and then pull it off. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's just get this over with. All right, it's, uh, we're gonna go on three. Three. <laughs> and thus the anesthetic has been delivered. To his face for some reason. I think I'm crying. I can't feel anything. <laughs> I can't feel anything up here. What the fuck? Quick. Well, now, Are you going to take my dick off or not? All right. We're just going to carefully rip. We're going to make the first incision onto the dick to cut it in half. And we're going to be using a, lo- a, a, a chainsaw bought from Lowe's. Da, 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 da. We support harpoon dicks. So we're just going to carefully. Ah. <laughs> All right, that's the first six inches off. Only 36 to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, it doesn't hurt all that bad. I'm just... Someone finally recognizes how awesome my dick is. <laughs> if you want, we can glue it back together at any time using this fun Elmer's glue. Oh, get it off! All right, we're just gonna... Be, be, we're gonna be like a... We're gonna, I'm just trying to get it off. <laughs> Real quick. This is gonna be like a, ripping off a band-aid. It'll be really quick. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> It's just like ripping off a band-aid, you guys, but if the band-aid were your penis. Okay, now let's stick the harpoon in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so, that actually feels kind of good. Wait, we missed. We're going to have to pull that one out. The harpoon? <laughs> yes. It's fine. It felt good. Try again. So we're going to have to rip out the hook part first. Ah! Um, okay. So now he is dickless, and we could leave him this way. I mean, I'm not just dickless. I'm like, I've literally been severed. Like, half of my body is hanging off my other half of my body, but he it's worth it. Let's try again. right now. Okay. Well, I sure am hanging. <laughs> just like, my hip is just the only thing holding the two halves of my body together. I am hung on so one end. So we're going to take careful aim, and okay. we're going to be having little Jimmy from Make-A-Wish Foundation taking the shot, because little Jimmy's final wish was to stick a harpoon dick into someone. Okay. So, little Jimmy, are you ready? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. Ah! Damn it! And now you are attractive. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna show off the. I'm gonna show off its potential, and I just want you to just. Are you ready? We are ready. <laughs> For reference, that entire gag, which I'm not sure if it's gonna stay in or not. Was him just holding, like, a collapsed umbrella in the harpoon area and waiting for him to show it off, at which point he unfurled the umbrella. Poof. <laughs> all, f- all good dicks have sound effects pre-built. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us on our um, economy podcast today. Uh, Thank from you, Nancy. 111 uh, Nairobi. Um, if you want to find us, uh, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Podcast Town, and pr- pretty much that's not a thing. Anywhere you can find podcasts, for the most part, you'll be able to find us. Good idea. Uh, me and my co-host, Bradley J. Berklich, work very, very hard Bradley on this show. He said a lot of horrible things in this episode. I really hope you won't hold that against him. Um, yes, future employers, please don't look at this podcast. This for- specific episode on account of, I think we should tell them. I... I am Theo J. Berklich. That's right. It's Theodore Berklich. <laughs> Theo George Washington Berklich. Okay, well, I wasn't trying to give out your full name, but as long as you're comfortable with it. And I will give out my address, too. I feel like I'm ready for people to find me. Okay. At 222 in Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> okay. So you can uh, send us mail there. Uh, and what you'll also find is that we have uh, social media platforms like uh, Twitter, Google, that's not one, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr, which are all at GoodIdeaCast. We have a Gmail, which is GoodIdeaPodcast at gmail.com. 
And uh, if you enjoyed the show, uh, then please like it or you can't like it. Fuck, I'm so tired. Share it, subscribe, uh, rate, give us a review. Actually, sharing it is like the best thing you can do, though, because if you send it to one of your friends and your friend ends up liking it, too, then they can send it to other people. And it really helps us grow the show and helps us do more with the show in the long run. Or if you want to send a dick pic followed by a good idea. Oh, my God, please send me dick <laughs> That's all I want, but make Please. sure they're soliciting. Like, if you're gonna send me a dick pic, ask me for something in Please return, send okay? A dick pic to Bradley J. Berklich. Like, if you're gonna send a dick pic, at least ask me to buy your Boy Scout popcorn. Wait, that's bad. <laughs> that's very, very bad. This message has been brought to you by the local youth minister, the local mistake foundation. <laughs> uh, for mistakes. Um, I suppose I should ask if you have anything to recommend. Your pick of the week. Hmm. My pick of the week? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start recommending Virginia restaurants. So there are two here I'm going to talk about. I thought you were going to say virginity. No, no, I have no experience with that. Um, I, I'm gonna... <laughs> now, hold on. <laughs> hold on, you guys. Stop the presses. <laughs> Thea George Washington Berklich has never experienced virginity before. <laughs> I have been fucking nonstop. Since I was born. So I'm going to recommend two things, Wawa and Cookout. Wawa is basically like 7-Eleven, but just better. You can get like good food there and also like other smaller, shittier amenities. And it's pretty cheap. And if you go there drunk or sober with drunk friends, it's fun. And the second thing is Cookout. Cookout is like five guys, but they're literally just giving away the food. Like, Let me tell you about Cookout. It's, <laughs> it's basically like seven ish dollars for like a double burger two sides and a shake like i can't believe they haven't brought this up before they have been lying to you cookout and wawa these have been my picks and recommendations fantastic i don't have a pick of the week uh just pick one of mine uh i'm gonna go with the cookout cool and um i think that's gonna do it for us uh thank you so much for listening big appreciate if you're listening to this particular episode it's probably because bradley and i didn't record this week and i'm trying to um get Wait, some stuff no, in you recorded with me bradley j berklich you mean thea george washington berklich the jig is up that's what the j stands for <laughs> um anyway this has been good idea i'm bradley berklich and I'm Bradley Berklich. We're done here. <laughs>